Man, it is nice out. Holy smokes. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, back to the garage. Uh, so it is like 70 degrees out, which is fucking awesome for February. But that being said, it's 70 this week, so it'll probably be like uh, 10 or 12 next week with a wind chill of like minus 10. That's just how it works here in Pennsylvania. We get these big swings and it sucks. And uh, what do you think about the sweet new shades? Pretty rad, right? Now nah, these are... Uh, like circa 1991 safety glasses a guy had at work eh, eh, i'll rock them for a little bit why not <laughs> anyway enough clowning um so i already started a little bit i got the cherry picker that i borrowed to pull the head in the garage i have caitlin sitting down on some blocks of wood with the um, brakes just off the concrete to make it a little lower a little easier to work on and get everything because I don't have one of those uh, fancy upside creeper things um, usually I just stand on a cooler or something but we should be able to get the majority of everything just standing now like this so if you didn't catch yesterday's video we got the turbo out we got the turbo out the well everything except for the exhaust housing that is we got the oil drain disconnected the oil feed the coolant pipe here um got the center section of the turbo out all that kind of good stuff all the intake stuff so tonight we're going to start off with taking off that turbo exhaust housing then we'll move over here get this intake manifold off um usually i like to try and pull the valve cover off as it makes it easier to get to some of the injection lines so we'll, we'll pull this off, pull the uh, valve cover and all off, and just slowly work our way down to the head bolts. So we will be pulling the injectors tonight. This top radiator hose will come out. Just our fuel rail, all that kind of stuff. I got the table set up with some cardboard on it. We're just ready to hit the ground running here. So that's enough jibber jabbering. Let's get started. Oh, oh, I did talk to the race truck is done. John said the truck, well, what am I doing? My fancy sunglasses. The race truck is done. Um, John said he is happy with it. He says the, the trans feels great. Everything feels how it should. So we can pick that up whenever we, we want. But we're in the middle of doing this, so we're not going to get that right yet. Um, uh, what else was there? There was something else. Oh, I talked to the machine shop. They said, depending on what we do with the head, whether we just get it cracked, checked, decked, you know all that or if we go ahead and get it o-ringed you know will depend on how long it's out so it could be between a week to two weeks something like that all right so let's get started get all this stuff off get that head out We got the intake manifold off, got the exhaust manifold, uh, the turbine housing off the uh, exhaust manifold. Um, the one nut, it didn't want to come off. I was, it felt like I was going to round it off. Got a uh, little pipe wrench on there, come right off. So the valve cover's off. We're down to like the important shit, if you will. Um, like I said, I like to get down to at least this point and get rid of this harness before I start messing with the injector lines. It just makes it easier to get to. And actually, now that I think about it, we'll take this rocker box spacer plate. I think it's called something like that, whatever. Anyway, we'll take that off. Um, one thing to note, this 
gasket between the valve cover and that spacer plate is also your injector wiring harness. So we want to be very careful when we are taking these nuts off. Um, really coming off, it's not that big a deal. They shouldn't be tight, but when you go back, it, it's some very low inch pounds torque. You just, you want them snug. If you over tighten them and snap off one of them stub, studs, you need an injector and that's a bad day. So we're already pulling a head gasket. We don't need any more issues. So what we'll do is we'll actually undo all those. We'll pull that gasket off. We'll pull this rocker, um, spa box, rocker box spacer or whatever you call it. We'll pull that out. And then we'll start working on our fuel rail and our injector lines and move on from there. The GoPro died, I'm not sure where. We haven't really gotten that far. Um, got the rocker box off, got that wiring harness for the injectors off. I also undid a lot of the wiring up front, actually pulled the wiring out for the grid heater um, just to clean up up front here. Um, what else did I undo? I undid the uh, dipstick tube, kind of got undid this major harness here. Um, it's up down here. So just kind of got everything out of the way a little bit so we can work. Uh, right now, it really probably doesn't matter where we start, um, whether we go after the rockers or we go after the injector lines. I'm going to go after the injection lines just because we have the rockers and all in the way and just protect the, the injectors a little bit. Um, really, with these lines, you just want to crack one side and then crack the other and you know get rid of number one get rid of number two so on and so forth and the back ones are the pain in the ass as is with everything on this all the stuff up here one two three four even that's easy that's cake um then we'll get to taking our rockers out our push rods our valve bridges and then the injectors so that's kind of a little update of where we're at we're making pretty good time it's just starting to get dark or well it's pretty dark but we're uh, we're looking good so far. I probably shouldn't have just said that because I probably just jinxed myself. But it is what it is. Let's keep moving. Got all the injector, uh, the, 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 got all the injection lines out, got the fuel rail out, but we did hit our first little snag of the night, which I was actually able to sort out a little bit. So as you can see, the number six fuel line is still on the rail. Um, it was starting to round off. Hopefully you guys can see that. So I fucked with it and fucked with it and I couldn't get it. I mean, whoever did this last must have really tightened the hell out of it. Um, that's probably something that I should have, I probably over torqued that when we put this together the last time. But anyway, um, I was, I was able to undo it from the injector itself and then undo the bolts, pull the banjo bolt, pull this, I believe it's a return, return, no, that's a feed. That's a feed from the CP3, the feed. And then the banjo, I believe banjo bolt, I believe is the return line. So I was able to undo all that. took all the bolts out and pulled it now if you saw i put a rag over it after a while because we want to keep this clean in here so i'll kind of wrap the rag around it try and keep it clean but i do see a little bit of dirt in there so we'll have to try and clean that out somehow um i'm not sure what the best way to go about that is because that's going to go right into our injectors so i don't know if we just flush that with fuel 
I'll have to uh, look into that. But, so that was our first little snag. Other than that, everything has kind of gone to plan. Um, everything has come out. Really, we haven't gotten into anything too dramatic yet. Not that any of it's really that dramatic. But I think I'll probably pull off the grid heater just because it's going to have to come off at some point. Just one less thing to worry about later. But we will go ahead and undo our rockers. We'll pull our push rods out. And I will lay everything like this is number one cylinder. So what I'll do is I have this rocker box oriented how it goes in the truck which you can tell by where we cut it out for our head studs so we'll put number one's rockers and push rods here so on and so forth valve bridges all that kind of good stuff and when we get back here there's actually two caps two little plastic caps up here well hopefully you guys can see it you pop those out and then you can get these rear push rods out which is uh pretty uh forward thinking for dodge and i think all the trucks are this way all the way down to the uh, second gen trucks so all right that's where we're at um next time i talk to you we'll probably be popping the injectors out when you're pulling these you can usually pull them as an assembly see we've got our valve bridges we're sticking a little do the old we just want to make sure wrong side make sure that this cup does not fall off we don't want to lose that All right, so I got all the jam nuts off of the connecting tubes. Now, I've heard of people putting the injector line on here and using a pry bar, which is not recommended, obviously. Um, so I got this little torque tools, um, connector tube puller. Uh, it's like, I wanna say it's 13, 15 bucks or something. Really, it just screws on here and it should pop them out. If one is extra tight, you can use a pair of channel locks, but you'll hear a pop. Oh, never mind, you'll just feel it. So there's one. Oh. Two. There's another. So pretty simple. This thing just threads down on the, uh, the connector tube. Because I plan on reusing them. Uh, this one looks a little crummy um, because we're using the same injectors we're not putting new injectors in the truck so the connecting tubes is actually what seals you know it actually seals to the body of the injector so us using the same injectors over we're, we're gonna have that same seal point on the injector so I don't really consider it to be a big deal I know a lot of guys say anytime you pull injectors you put new connecting tubes on it and that's probably the absolute correct way, but as long as these things aren't all dinged up and don't look like shit, I don't think it's a problem to reuse them with the same injectors. Now we're gonna pull the injectors, so we're gonna undo our clamp bolts, which I actually already started this one. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull them out so they're not, so we have play. No more than that. Right, but the bolt is still holding this uh, retainer, I guess you'd call it. Right, so we're gonna actually have to pop the injector out because it has O rings in there. So we'll put a little pry bar down here and be able to pull it out. And that will keep us from losing the injector and it flying off. And it just, it's a lot safer to do it this way. So, get the pry bar in there. All right, so now our injector's free. Can undo these bolts. And I, I, I guess I do that just a little, just to be cautious. I mean, just, I don't want to throw the injector off the side of the truck or something if it's really stuck in there. So there's our injector.
All right, so I think we are ready to pull the head studs out. Um, rather than just zipping off the front ones with the gun, I'm going to do them by hand just so I can feel how tight they are. Um, just to see, hey, maybe maybe something didn't get torqued. Maybe I missed something when we put the studs in. Um, really, I think it's because I had those big 200% over injectors in it without a proper tune, like a an idiot. Um, I do know better, and for whatever reason, I just slapped them in here before I could get a new tune from Ryan and ran it um, back shit it's been over a year now but anyway i think that's what started this whole mess um so i'm just going to go through and i think i'll probably just start in the center um i'll probably just start here and probably work my way out like you know like your normal torque sequence um i can't really tell you why i just think that's what i'm going to do oh i do need to unhook that coolant line too prepare ship for light speed no, no, no. So we've never gone that fast before. I don't know if the ship can take it. What's the matter, Colonel Sanders? Chicken? Prepare ship! Prepare ship for ludicrous speed! Got all the head studs out. Unfortunately, we had an incident on the very last bolt. You guys probably can't see it right this second. God damn it. The whole light situation is a pain. All right. But uh, I'm leaning, I was leaning on that a little hard, that last bolt. Um, so we'll have to get a new one of them. Really, I think to pull the head, it would be easier without the shroud and the fan. But at this point, I'm curious whether we can do it like this. So we're going to give it a try. I'll get the cherry picker set up. I got a couple little come-alongs. I don't know if they'll work. I've never pulled one before. But if we can get them on there and get it up, that'll allow us to, to tilt it and kind of work with it how we want. Um, at least that's my hope. Um, I also I did get the fuel return, that banjo bolt in the back off. Um, I just have it laying there right now because I couldn't get the fitting, but without the head there, we'll be able to access it easily. So, that's kind of the game plan. Let's see if we can get this thing out tonight. And I pulled the alternator too. I forgot about that. I had to pull the alternator off this bracket here. So, all right. Once again, let's see if we can get this head off tonight. There's nothing. Check that shit out.
Well, it worked. Kind of. Um, <laughs> I thought everything was good as soon as I put a hand on it. I guess because I had it, both of these hooks in this hook, it, you know, it pulled out. Um, and as soon as I got it out here and got my hand off it, it actually spun. So we actually locked out. Um, hate, I hate working like that, but um, we definitely have to replace this now. But we're planning on doing that anyhow. So <laughs> I guess it's... <laughs> uh, I'm just glad we got it out. And that could have been very bad. But I'm... <laughs> It scared the shit out of me when it happened, but as soon as I realized, I didn't know what happened. I, it scared the shit out of me, but then I saw it sitting there and said, all right, we're fine. So, whew, that was a close one. Um, but it worked, it worked. I just, I wasn't paying enough attention to the hook and all. Um, so, got it in the chain here, that worked. We got it out. Good for us. See what we got here. I guess everything looks fine. I don't, I don't, I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at. What the hell. All right. Well, I'm gonna set this down. We'll take a look underneath, and then we'll prop the head up and look at it good. All right. So. All right, Everything looks fine. Ooh, look at our pistons. Let's see, let's check this gasket out. I'm not seeing anything obvious right this second. But some rust in there. Hmm. I don't see anything obvious. I'm not happy about that. It's a lot of fucking work for nothing. Let me investigate further. So, I pulled the gasket all apart. And don't mind the blood there. I might have uh, gotten myself a little bit. But, uh, I, I kind of separated it piece by piece. Just, well, like you know individually before I rip the whole damn thing apart but as you can see here these two pieces of the gasket are not connected on the number two piston here it's actually kind of thin there in the center and on number three we're actually missing oh a good eighth inch at least so all the rest are kind of popped up but they're they're intact so that must be why our problem was kind of intermittent and it wouldn't do anything unless you really gave it hell, you know, and why we could drive it. So it wasn't a complete failure of the gasket. Um, I was kind of hoping to find, a, you know, this whole little valley was gone, but that, that would explain why we only had that kind of intermittent issue. So right there between two and three was where our problem was. I guess it was just, getting pressurized and blowing into these two coolant ports and uh yeah but yeah not not a big gaping hole in the gasket so i guess that means we did the right thing pulling this thing out but uh yeah so here's all our pistons everything in here that i've checked out so far everything looks pretty good um not that I'm an expert at what I'm looking at, but like in the cylinders, you can still see the cross hatching and all that. And 
in the uh, cylinder here. So, you know, nothing looks bad, nothing looks scored up or anything. So, you know, the motor's still healthy, which is what we would have expected. So, yeah, that's, uh, it's unfortunate about our fan trout here, but it was already fucked up, so I'm not that upset about it. Uh, <laughs> I'm just glad it didn't get me, that's for damn sure. But, uh, yeah, we were going to be replacing that anyhow, so now we're definitely replacing that. But the fan's still fine. Well, other than flopping off these wires, but the fan's still fine. The radiator didn't get damaged. So, yeah, that was, that was me. I should have been paying more attention to where that was on the hook. I should know a little better. Should have just gone with a straight piece of chain or, you know, put that in there. So I had a piece of chain on either side. But those little come-alongs work good, though, once we uh, almost killed the truck. All right, guys. So other than my little fuck-up, we had a pretty good night in the garage. We got a lot of shit done. Um, very good progress for a school night, that's for sure. But the head's off. It's sitting on the floor here. I want to clean it up. We got to get, you know, the manifold off. Uh, get a couple sensors out of it and all that stuff before we take it to the machine shop um, Get them to look at it, you know deck it all that. I haven't decided whether I'm gonna o-ring it or not um, Seeing that head gasket I might end up just o-ringing it for the hell of it So that's how to destroy a fan shroud. I mean that's how to pull the head on your 6-7 Cummins I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please like it subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you guys on the next one Get out in your garage, get to working on your truck. Try not to smash anything. I know it could be hard, but try not to. See you guys later.